Hi, I'm Chris Slogar from BuckeyeInklings.com. So we are going to make this cute little box today out of Be Merry paper, which is already available in our annual catalog, and Garden Green cardstock. This is a project we made in club this month. We made this cute little size. It's a three inch box that's one and a half inches high. And after we make this box on the video, I'm going to show you how to modify the pattern so you can make um, different sizes. Alright, so let me show you a little more about the box if I slide off the ribbon. Nice thing about this box, um, the two pieces are exactly the same size and made the same way. So that gives you a really tight fit. Um, after you've filled your box, you can kind of collapse the box bottom in a bit to fit the top around it and that makes for a very tight fit that won't come apart okay and another nice thing is that if you make these ahead of time you can collapse them down and store them flat okay just like so and you've got these you know two flat pieces instead of a box so let's get started um, this size starts from six inch squares of both the designer paper and the cardstock all right and I am going to show you how to score on the green cardstock this is garden green I think it's a little easier to see on the video I've also got the pattern drawn out in pencil um, but what you're going to do is lay the cardstock um, on your scoring tool or you can you can use your trimmer if you like you need to score one and a half inches away from either edge. Okay, so it's a six inch box and we're scoring at the quarter point. So remember that later when we modify this for um, bigger squares. Um, we're going to score at the quarter point, one and a quarter inch, and also from the other side. So I guess this is the three quarter point at four and a half inches. And also for this particular box, we're going to make an indent um, right here at three inches, the midpoint. Okay, and then rotate that and do the same thing on the other side. So score at one and a half and four and a half and press a mark at three inches. Okay, on the last two sides, you just need to press that mark at three inches. Now, that mark from the midpoint to midpoint needs to be a score line. So what I've got on my scoring tool, I took a Sharpie a long time ago, marked in a line at 10 inches, just because I'm right-handed and I come over here to use, um, use this all the time as a scoring line. I'm going to line up those midpoint marks in along that um, along that groove that I've got blackened in because then I know that makes a continuous line okay from from that midpoint to the next midpoint need to do that on all four sides okay so follow that around do it on four sides and You may or may not be able to see that, um, but what I've got here is the same outline and score lines drawn um, here on the white paper, so maybe you can see that a little better. All right, so um, to get started, we're going to just hold um, the side that I scored, I just keep up. And I'm going to, in the lower left corner, cut along that score line to that first intersection, like so. And then also from the corner to that score line, or, or I'm sorry, that intersection. Okay, so you're cutting away a triangle. And it's okay if you cut away too much it's better to err on the side of cutting away too much we just want a little tab left um, to, to form the box and 
Also with that in mind, we are going to trim away just a little wedge of this triangle. So maybe come in like an eighth inch or to up to a quarter inch and trim away a wedge from that point to the end point of the score line just to narrow that triangle down. You'll see when in, in construction that will just really make this piece tuck away nicely so you don't see it. Okay, so we've done that corner. We're going to rotate the piece and bring a new square into that lower left corner. Do the exact same thing. Exact same thing every time. You're going to cut first on that score line. You're going to trim away a triangle and then you're going to narrow up this um, piece that's left behind. Okay, rotate and do that again. Okay, the, you've got the vertical cut, you've got the diagonal cut to, to cut away the triangle, and then you're going to narrow up what's left. Each time you're just rotating a new a new corner into that lower left corner so that you can do it the same way each time. Okay, until you have all four corners done. At that point you can um, just it, it's very easy to to bend on those score lines. You don't have to burnish them all just kind of get them started so that our construction will be easier and um, and then you've got this all right from this point you're just going to take your um, fast fuse I like fast fuse it's really easy to apply sticky strip liquid glue might be a little tough to do all four at once but it's up to you I'm putting my sticky strip or my fast fuse just on that triangle that I have narrowed up okay so the triangle that is that is kind of sticking out in that area we were cutting just just um, sticky strip there okay and once you have that in place this is going to be the box bottom each one of those sticky tabs, those little triangle pieces that are now sticky, are going to tuck in under the adjacent triangle that is, you know, not, not cut at all. Okay, so the, the little narrowed up one with the sticky strip is going under the adjacent triangle. You're going to make a nice true box corner and then press that together. Okay, so do that on all four corners. That sticky piece goes under the adjacent triangle section. And make a nice true corner on all four sides. And then you have something like this. Okay, and you can just kind of gently um, get all of these score lines committed to fold just doing all four like that and then after you have them kind of flexible like that you can push your box closed I just I just hold up all four points and then press them all down like going in a clockwise pattern Okay, so if you wanted your box to store flat, there, there you've got the box bottom. Okay, but when you open it up, then you've got your, your box base. All right, let's go through that again for the top piece. Like I said, the exact same size, it's going to be the exact same procedure. I recommend you keep the side that's going to show on your designer paper up. Okay, that'll, that'll be easier, I think, to see what I'm doing. All right, we're going to score again at one and a half and four and a half and press a mark at three inches. Okay, one and a half and four and a half and press a mark at three inches. On the remaining sides, press your mark at three inches. 
Okay, then come over to your um, darkened in line, or if you're on your trimmer, just, just put those, that start and end point, your midpoints in the groove of your trimmer and score them. All right, so all four sides, and I mean, you can imagine how pretty this is going to be in all different papers, but gosh, especially the Christmas papers, and since we often get six inch stacks, I like this size that uses a six inch, six inch piece of paper. All right, so once again, we've got the lower left corner, and we are going to cut along the score line, trim away the triangle, and narrow up what's left behind there. Okay, and I'm going to rotate, do the next corner, and narrow up what's left. It's nice to have this little piece narrowed up it totally tucks out of the way. You don't have to worry about any little edges sticking out over the top of your, you know, the, the box bottom here, or you just don't have any edges showing this way. Okay, so once again, keeping the outside of the box facing you. So this is going to be the side of the paper that shows. I'm going to put, oh sorry, I forgot to just get all these little score lines started. But again, since we've scored on this side, these score lines fold very easily um, the direction they should go down around the box top. Okay, so we've got that kind of all started. I'm going to again on on these little triangles that we've skinnied up, I'm going to add my adhesive. Okay, only on the triangle part that we've we've narrowed. And then this is the box top, keep that in mind you're tucking the sticky triangle under the adjacent triangle okay and pressing that together into a nice box corner do that again all the way around and then um, Take, take those corners, kind of get those score lines pressed. And you can fold this all flat if you like. And here's your box top. Now on the top, I'd like to um, trim away like a little finger hold. So I've got my one inch punch and I'm just going to, um, you know, come in like a little, not even half a circle to make on opposite sides, make a little finger hold. Okay, so that when your box is put together, sorry, I'm doing this at the wrong angle you've got a little um, grip to pull the box bottom off. Okay, so what I did is I just decorated with um, this really pretty label shape. I think it's called the pretty label punch. This is a great punch shape to have. And there is a coordinating stamp set called Label Me Pretty, and I've used um, You're the Best off of that and layered up a one and three eighth inch and one and one quarter inch circle on top of this outline uh, punched with the label punch. So very, very pretty punches. All right, so that is, you can stop watching if you just wanted to see this, this box, but let me talk about different sizes now because it's gonna be really handy to have little si different sizes. Okay, so say you want a different size box, and here I have, okay, this was our original made from a six inch square. 
Here I have doubled the dimension, so I started with a 12 inch piece of designer paper, this is retired, 12 inch piece of cherry cobbler cardstock. Okay, made it exactly the same way as this little guy, and it's just, you know, twice as big all around. Instead of scoring the 12 inch piece, you know, we've got the square pattern here, at one and a half inch from each edge, we scored it at three inches from each edge, okay, and that gives you three inch height and a six inch square area for box. Um, the midpoints were at six inches instead, so I connected those midpoints and the box comes out basically the exact same way, all right? I've also done it starting with a four inch square and that makes a little two inch area box with one inch sides, okay, because one inch would be your score line, one inch from each from each edge. All right, so I know um, Stampin' Up! will have envelopes in the holiday catalog for little three inch cards. These are, these are some I had from the past. They measure about three and one eighth inch and then the little three inch cards um, fit them and I actually wanted to just increase this box size because that won't fit to a three and a half inch square. Okay, so that I could, I could have a box for these little cards. What I'd done according to what we were just talking about for a three and a half inch box okay here's the three and a half inch box I knew I would need a seven inch square to start with score lines one and three quarters then from each side alright but I don't really like the idea of a seven inch square and I really don't need my box to be one and three quarter inches high. I would really prefer to use a six inch square because that's efficient and um, we also have pads, cardstock pads that are given to us that way. So I decided I would make the height smaller by a half inch and take this box back to a six inch, well so that it would start as a six inch square. Okay, so here's my six inch square. Here's going to be my box top. The score lines then are one and a quarter inch away from each edge. And so the box height, instead of being one and three quarter inch, as this first dark line shows, the height will be one and one quarter inch instead. We're just chopping off that extra half inch. And this is going to be our new pattern. The difference is we are not going to score from midpoint to midpoint in this case we are going to score along a 45 at each corner and this, to stick with me, this is not going to be that hard alright so this becomes our pattern for that box and let me just show you this box really works and it's just not one and, a, one and three quarter inch high, it's one and one quarter, which actually is a little bit better. What I've got going here is a bunch of these little three inch note cards, three and one eighth inch envelopes, and that um, fits perfect. Okay, so let me, um, let me see, let me, get a, let me get a good pattern for this here, so you don't have to look at that. All right, so instead, we're going to use a six inch square, and I've just transferred what, what I was drawing up in red here 
to um, this diagram for the three and a half inch box. Our score lines are one and a quarter inch from each edge. And we are also going to use an end point for our diagonals that's always one and a quarter inch away from those horizontal and vertical score lines. Okay, let me show you in practice what we're doing here. Um, hold on one sec. Okay, so I, I got our six inch square for the base of this box of garden green cardstock. Remember, we were at one and a half before. I'm going to move the markers over so that we're one and a quarter and one and a quarter from each side. Okay, and I'm going to um, score those. Now, the marks that we're going to need to connect will be one and a quarter away from this score line. So I'm going to start here at one and a quarter and make a mark at two and a half. Alright, and then I'm going to start here at four and three quarters, count back one and a quarter, and the mark will be at three and a half. Okay, see we can't use midpoints anymore according to this diagram we came up with, but it's it's no big deal. We're just going to mark so that we can have a 45 degree score line through that corner. All right, so rotate, draw or um, score in one and a quarter and four and three quarters, okay, because that's one and a quarter away there. Make your mark points at two and a half and three and a half. All right, on the last two sides, just make those mark points two and a half and three and a half. Two and a half three and a half. Okay, now come over here and score in those diagonals that will take you right through the corner on all four sides. Alright, so you're not starting and ending from the midpoint, but it's the same procedure. Okay, I'm not sure. You can kind of see that. Got the same look. And again, it should look like this. All right, to make the box bottom, you're going to do the same thing. Cut. Cut away the triangle and narrow what's left. And I'm going to um, fast forward while I make this box bottom. But as you can see, I'm just doing the same thing I did before. Okay, so there you have the box bottom. It's um, very much like the other box bottoms, except you can see the sides are smaller, or um, the, the sides aren't quite so high, and so the um, area of the box is larger, and there's a little opening in the middle. Okay, so no big deal. But that will fit your little three inch note cards um, when those become available. You're going to love those envelopes. And there's so much great designer paper coming too in the holiday catalog. So, one other thing, I took it one step further and um, thought, well, maybe, maybe you want a rectangle. 
So I made this size and the area of the box is two and a half by four. I thought, well, you could put, um, this is the box top, but the little gift card and some candy, you could wrap this up cute, um, would be cute inside of this. <laughs> this is another one of those Be Merry papers. So cute. All right, so for a two and a half by four inch box, I decided I just wanted one inch sides. And I started with cardstock that was two and a half plus two inches, one inch for each side. So this measures four and a half. Um, the length at four inches needs uh, an extra inch added for each side and that total length then becomes six inches okay to make this box top so four and a half by six and let me show you how to score so we've got we've got one inch sides on this project so we are going to score this is not going to be the same on every side let me just take away the the markers so they don't confuse you we are going to um, score one inch from each side. So at three and a half, at one, we're going to make that extra mark at one inch away from this, which is two and a half, one inch away from that first line. So our, our marks are at two and two and a half. They're really close to each other on this side. All right, we're going to turn and score again one inch from each side. So we're scoring at one and five. And we need a mark at two and four, okay? Because that's one inch. That's the side height. That's one inch away from our score line. All right, on the short side again, we're, we're marking at two and two and a half. And on the long side again, we're marking at two and four. All right, so um, connecting the score, you know, the, the marks for those score lines. Again, we're not using the midpoints like on this first box that was so easy, but this is not much harder. Um, we're just connecting to make a 45 through each of those corners. All right. The procedure is exactly the same again. I'm going to speed through that in the video. Vertical cut, trim away corner, narrow up what's left. All right, on all four sides. Okay, so there we have the box bottom, and I made the top earlier. Super cute. Love that little reindeer print. Okay. So um, I hope you'll try this, and I hope you'll modify this for whatever size you need. Uh, if you'd like to keep it at this size, this is really cute too. And um, visit me at BuckeyeInklings.com. Thanks. Thanks for watching.